the questions about evolution is what do you mean by the word evolution? And the problem is that the word means many different things to different people. Evolution can mean we see that over time, a long time ago, objects were more simple biological things, and then over time, more complicated things like ourselves emerged. That's kind of natural history. With evolution as a mechanism, it says you have mutations, you have selection, and these mechanisms together generate that complexity. And you have evolution as a kind of a worldview. You know, George Gaylord Simpson, man is a product of a, of a process which did not have him in mind. He was not planned. Those are theological statements that are put on top of evolution. The problem for the average Christian is that they want to attack, and I think rightly so, evolution number three, the worldview. But instead of saying, you know, the science, the natural history, and even the mechanism of evolution doesn't, has, doesn't actually imply that, that philosophy, they try to attack all three at once. So what's the problem I have with the intelligent design arguments? A lot of the arguments appear, at least to the layman, to be attacking evolution number two. They're saying mutations and natural selections are insufficient to describe the complexity that we see around us. The problem with that is twofold. One is that it's kind of an argument that looks a little bit like an argument for God of the gaps. You don't really, something we don't understand, so therefore God must have done it. That's always dangerous because what if someday or later we do understand? It'll be a bad apologetic argument. It's also problematic, I think, because it's not based enough on scripture. And the difficulties for Christians in interpreting the evolutionary story in scripture has to do with natural history, has to do with the idea that the world is old. Is the world old or is the world young? That's really where the, the Bible stands. Or stands. That's where some people feel the Bible and science have some friction. I think that that's not necessary. But that's where inter important interpretive work has to happen. And so I worry that this intelligent design argument pulls us away from the Bible in a way that isn't helpful. I also think that if we look at, um, and this is something that Francis Collins and others have written about more eloquently than me, if you look at the, the genes in your own body, you see, you see remnants of that natural history. You see remnants of that common ancestry we had with the chimpanzee. Those are there. And they look like they came about by some kind of stochastic process, some process that used an evolutionary mechanism. Maybe we haven't understood all the evolutionary mechanisms yet. Maybe there's more beautiful ones that are coming. But the fact that this happened seems very, very strong. So therefore, the argument to say, well, th it, it, this particular object could not have possibly evolved, I don't really see what the apologetic traction is or what the biblical mandate for that is. Um, and, I, and I think I would, I would like to look back a bit more closely at what the Bible says.